Phil Urbina representing District 4. Uh, yep. Try that again. Thank there you. We go. Thanks to everybody who's tuning in. This is such an important election. I feel very fortunate that I've been able to live in Carlsbad for 40 years. And I've been involved in the community for that 40 years. I've been involved in the Chamber of Commerce for pretty much that whole 40 years. I've served on the board of directors of the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce for seven years. I served as chairman of the board, the same position you have, Matt, here on the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce. And so I have a unique perspective. I've been in the corporate world. I've run a small business. I have a unique perspective of the problems Carlsbad businesses face today, especially during this COVID crisis, and especially when the competition might not be down the street on El Camino Real, but it might be in China or Vietnam somewhere. I have served this community in many capacities as a leader. I have been president or the equivalent title of the Carlsbad Boys and Girls Club, the Lacoste Youth Organization, the Carlsbad Christmas Bureau, and the Knights of Columbus. I've been serving Carlsbad as a Rotarian for 35 years. I've been Rotary, Rotarian of the Year twice and Rookie of the Year. If I'm elected, I will focus on public safety, fiscal responsibility, and responsible growth management. I have a record of leading successful organizations to serve the people of Carlsbad, and that's what I will do on the Carlsbad City Council. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. And our last introduction, certainly not least, is Teresa Acosta. Hi, yes, I'm Teresa Acosta. I'm a candidate for Carlsbad City Council, District 4. I'm a small business owner here in Carlsbad and an active community leader. I've spent the last 20 years working with government agencies to help them better serve their communities throughout California. I've spent the last 10 years as a business owner negotiating public-private partnerships. I'm an active volunteer. I chair two committees right here at the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce. I co-chair the Government Affairs Committee and I chair the Technology Advisory Committee. I've served uh, on multiple nonprofit boards here in the community from MAC Project to the National Charity League. I am very excited to be running for city council. I'm proud to be one of four generations of La Costa residents, from my grandmother who's 97 to my daughter who's 21. I'm running to protect our quality of life now and to plan for the future, for my daughter's future. I will champion environmental protections, smart infrastructure, safe neighborhoods, and a strong local economy. I will, bring, I will bring my collaboration skills, my negotiation and facilitation skills, and my leadership experience to the Carlsbad City Council. I will also bring a true and deep sense of public service. I look forward to our discussion today and to earning your support for District 4. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, everybody. So just a quick, um, at www.carlsbad.gov, you can find, whoop, it's not showing up, a, a district map, and district number four, you can think of as La Costa. And campaigning for district four are Teresa Acosta and Phil Urbina. Okay, we are moving on now to a few, to some, a couple questions. Each candidate's gonna have 90 seconds to respond. And the first question, again, 90 seconds apiece. In November 2019, the cities of Carlsbad, Del Mar, and Solana Beach formed a Clean Energy Alliance, a nonprofit public entity that will operate a community choice energy program within their service territories. Please share your views on the role of Clean Energy Alliance and your overall position on the city achieving its climate action plan goals. Phil. Community choice energy is a great idea with a lot of potential. The idea is that it's gonna save us 2% and create a lot of green energy. I think it's gonna be very difficult for us to create 2% savings for our, for our uh, rate payers. But in order to do that, one of the key factors here is going to be that Carlsbad, Oceanside, and Solana Beach are not sufficient to create those economies of scales. We need to grow that 
to have any success in the future. We need to make sure that we are working with other cities to grow that CCE. And if we can't get past Del Mar and Solana Beach and Carlsbad, then Carlsbad needs to look at joining other, other groups. It's a great idea. It's a way for us to save energy, to create more green energy. We need to continue promoting solar energy on houses and in our parking lots. We need to also realize that it's actually more expensive to create greenhouse, um, to create uh, renewable energy than it is some of the other. So to create that 2% savings, we're gonna need to make sure we partner up with some other cities that have the skills and the great payers to make that a successful CCE. Thank you, Phil. Teresa. Thank you for the question. I support the Clean Energy Alliance. As I mentioned, I've worked with government agencies all over California for 20 years. It's not just groups of cities, but actually individual cities have been able to make CCEs work and work with a cost reduction for their taxpayers, for their ratepayers. So we can do it. If there's a will, there's a way. I'm an environmentalist who walks the walk. I have been endorsed by the Sierra Club and the League of Conservation Voters because of this. I have ideas about how we can reduce greenhouse gases in other ways too. But the, the Clean Energy Alliance is an important part of that. I support it absolutely. And I know that we can find a way to ensure that we meet that goal of 2%. When it's up and running and online, in May of 2021, we will show everybody that we were able to make it happen and because there was leadership at the helm. The second question, in March 2019, the city reached a settlement with the County of San Diego regarding the future operations of McClellan Palomar Airport. As part of that agreement, the city had ceased its efforts to change the zoning requirements on the land surrounding the airport which the county had opposed. The proposed change would have placed new limits on the airport supporting uses outside the airport. Please share your views about this settlement and the city's relationship to the airport. Again, we're starting with Phil. And please unmute yourself, Phil. I used to work in government affairs and the legal part of the legal department in the uh, cable TV industry. And one thing I know for sure is sometimes it makes sense to come up with a settlement and you don't always get what you want. I think the city did a good job in coming up with a settlement of that given the uh, fact that the county actually operates that and looking at what we could possibly come away with. Carlsbad Airport is a great um, asset to the city, but we understand it also comes with some problems. And we need to make sure we're listening to citizens and we are doing everything that we can to make sure that airport is operating within the guidelines and what we can control. And what we can't control, we need to make sure that we're partnering with the County of San Diego to make sure it's controlling whatever it can so it has fewer negative impacts on Carlsbad residents. Thank you, Phil. Teresa. Thank you. I oppose airport expansion uh, at the Palomar McClellan Airport. And I know that the settlement agreement was an attempt to come to terms with the County of San Diego so that we could move forward. As a small business owner who works on public-private partnerships, I understand and I support the idea. I think settlement agreements are usually a great idea. This particular settlement agreement had large loopholes that the county has taken advantage of. And many of you may know that the county had agreed to notify the city if they were buying adjacent land parcels to the airport and trying to expand despite the city declaring its uh, intention not to not to uh, have it expand. So the county has gone ahead and done that and purchased land parcels and not publicly declared their intention. It was found out later. So that was a big loophole. Uh, it wasn't clear how they, they were supposed to notify the city of Carlsbad or the public. There are other loopholes in the settle settlement agreement. 
I am opposed to that. I think the settlement agreement uh, could have been better and stronger. And I uh, have been endorsed by the Citizens for a Friendly Airport because of my stance on this. I think that the community has made it clear that we don't want the noise pollution or the environmental impacts of it, a larger airport, a busier uh, airport near residential neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. The next question is that SANDAG, the Regional Transportation Authority in San Diego, they have proposed five bold moves. The five bold moves proposes to invest significantly in regional public transportation. Please share your views on how traffic on Interstate 5 and, when our, and within our community should be managed. We're starting. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, heard, I heard it. Thank you. Uh, I am supportive of Sandag's five big moves. I think that we need a bold vision for our region. We'll give Teresa just a second here while her sure. internet probably catches up with us. Teresa. Can you hear me now? Probably need to oh, go. Oh, goodness. About seconds. I can't believe I froze. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm supportive of Sandag's five big moves. I think that we need a bold vision that includes regional collaboration. And I think that this is it. It is bold, it is expensive, and it is going to take a lot of buy-in from the community. So we need to speak about these issues with the public. We need to discuss them, get public input, vet them with our communities throughout the region and ensure that folks are on board. Uh, these include things like public transit, they include infrastructure, they include looking at technology and ensuring that we are taking our transportation systems into the future, that we are not putting more cars onto already congested transportation networks. So I'm in support of Sandex Five Big Moves. It's a, a bold thing to address climate change and reduce greenhouse gases, and we're all gonna need to, to bind together and make this happen. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Phil. We all love bold plans. When you call them a bold plan, that's probably the greatest marketing you could do. But bold plans have to be realistic. And it's not just quite a bit costly, it's a $177 billion plan with no guarantee of success, with no guarantee that it will reduce greenhouse emissions at all. It may very well be another government boondoggle. My wife and I visited our son studying abroad this past fall. We went to Madrid, Rome, and Barcelona, and we took public transit everywhere. It was delightful. But everywhere I looked, you go right off the street, the main streets, and there are massive apartment complexes and high density, 10, 20 unit stories. And that's why those work. And that's why it will not work here in Carlsbad. That plan is just never gonna benefit anybody in Carlsbad, but it's gonna cost each person in this county, man, woman, and child, $50,000 per person. We need to be widening our roads. We need to be taking measured approaches to high-speed transit. We need to be re, um, improving our bus lines to the extent that we can. And we need to take advantage of COVID and the Zoom world that we live in, just like we're doing today, and encourage companies to work from home, have their people. Carlsbad, especially South Carlsbad, 15% of the people work from home. That's a great thing. Thank you, Phil. The next question. Carlsbad has been assigned a significant number of housing units by Sandag for its regional housing number allocation. How do you propose meeting these numbers? Phil, your turn. I was talking with my daughter not long ago and she was getting ready to graduate from Creighton University in Nebraska. And she told me that her plan was to stay there because she could never imagine being able to afford to live in Carlsbad. That broke my heart. One of the reasons why I'm running for city council is so we can work to make sure our children can come back and they can live in Carlsbad. We need to make sure we have housing for our police officers, our nurses, our teachers, and our restaurant workers. The arena numbers that we have from Sandag are expecting us to put 
39, build 3,900 homes in Carlsbad over the next decade. We need a council that will look closely at our options and decide where we can put those and what types of housing that we could do without destroying the character that makes Carlsbad the great place that we love to call home. We certainly can look at vacant industrial uh, areas in the industrial park. I would absolutely support that. And we can look at some of the strip malls that need to be retrofitted, that are getting aged. We can put commercial on the bottom floors and we can put uh, residential on the upper floors. I think the uh, El Camino Real and La Casta Avenue uh, strip mall that's being redone right now would have been a perfect place for us to be able to do that. But we need to build those 3,900 homes, a wide variety of them, and we need to make sure we do it in such a way that it's responsible and does not destroy the character of Carlsbad. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Teresa. We have a housing supply issue in Carlsbad. You may know that we have some of the house, highest housing prices in the entire county, and we definitely have the highest rent prices in all of San Diego County. And that's because Carlsbad is a very desirable place to be, but it's also because we don't have enough housing units. So when the state came down with its numbers for individual communities, uh, we ended up with an allotment of 3,875 units we need to build here in Carlsbad. We need to plan that over the next eight years or face penalties. So how can we do that? And we do that by working together with the community. Leela mentioned a housing survey. I know that that had an excellent response rate. I responded to it and shared my feedback. I've also been hosting community events in District 4 to talk about the future of housing in Carlsbad. This is such an important issue for our quality of life. Where will they go? How will we be able to fit them into a city that's almost at build out? In the past, our uh, city council was able to uh, so uh, make sure that land was able to be developed in large quantity and large density. We see some of those projects that are just now online and we were able to reap the tax benefits of those. Now we're nearing build out where it's gonna be harder to place them. So I'm looking at ideas like rezoning certain uh, commercial and industrial areas to residential. I like mixed use projects. I like upzoning in some areas. Uh, I definitely like transit oriented developments. We've been talking about these issues. Those are the issues that I prioritize for our community and I will continue to work with you on those. Thank you, Teresa. Our next question for 90 second responses from a candidates revolves around the homeless challenge that we have in our community. Homelessness has become a significant issue in North County, San Diego. Share how you think the city of Carlsbad should solve this challenge. Phil, your turn. Thank you, Matt. I only wish we could solve this. This is a nationwide problem and nobody has found the solution. But what we can do is address it. And I believe Carlsbad needs to be compassionate. We all wanna be compassionate. We all wanna help those people who we can help. And to do that, we, our hot team is going out there and they're working to put our homeless people together with services to help them because they have a lot of different problems. Every homeless person has a different problem. You cannot just take one and say, here's our solution. But I also think we need to think long terms. One of the greatest programs we have here in North County to help people is Solutions for Change. It has a 1,000 day program to take families and give them the skills that they need so they won't be homeless any longer. I've toured that facility many times. It's a great organization and we need to help them. They work at teaching people to fish, not just giving them a fish. But the last thing I'll have to add is we also need to protect ourselves from those people who don't want to avail themselves of those services. We've had a couple of murders here recently and rapes from homeless people. And we need to make sure we give our police all we can to deal with those problems and keep us safe. Thank you, Phil. Teresa. Thank you. The homeless problem in our region is a regional issue and it will require regional problem solving. 
Uh, I have been involved with the San Diego Union Tribune Community Advisory Board. I sat on that board for three years, and this was one of the major regional issues that we tackled together. We put on a forum, I helped organize the forum, where we had a panel of experts from, from our region and beyond to come and talk with us about housing first and other models, ways that we can provide wraparound services. And I know also that the San Diego uh, County uh, Health and Human Services Agency is coordinating with all of the cities in North County to tackle this together through a regional task force. So I'm proud to see the regional collaboration on this issue. And I know that that's what it's going to take to tackle this very difficult problem. We are gonna to have to band together with nonprofits, with government agencies at different levels and seek uh, more funding to build more housing. But tackling also the low income housing issue that we previously discussed is very important. We also need to focus on mental health and on immediate assistance to people People who are currently uh, living in encampments. We know that we cannot uh, remove them from public spaces without having a bed for them by state law. So we need to ensure we have enough beds for them, but also that we have a path to sustainability for them. And thank you for everybody's responses on those questions. We're moving on to a different section now, and we are now moving into yes and no responses. So for the audience, what you're going to see is I'm going to ask our candidates a question and the candidates are simply going to raise up a sign to that yes or no question that says yes or no, reflecting their views on the particular question. Uh, for our candidates, please um, make your answer either a yes or a no. So the first question, the coaster is a great asset to the city of Carlsbad and also a disruption to the Carlsbad village in some ways. Do you support the city investing both time and money to trench the tracks in downtown Carlsbad? So Phil is responding yes, Teresa yes, Question number two, recent behavior by law enforcement personnel in the United States has brought to the surface a public discussion about how the police conduct their business. Do you support defunding the police in the city of Carlsbad? That is unanimous and easy to respond. That is a no. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to all the respondents. Moving on to the next question. Recently, the topic of project labor agreements has surfaced in our community. These agreements give preference to the labor organizations on public capital improvement projects. Do you support adopting project labor agreements? Teresa is responding yes, Phil, no. Okay, hopefully now moving on to a section of fun questions. In this section, we're gonna be asking our candidates a couple open-ended questions on fun stuff. Our candidates are gonna write down their responses. I'm hoping that I'm able to read them on such a small screen. And then I'm gonna be reading the respondents' questions to the audience. So question number one. Please share your three favorite books that you've ever read. One item just for the audience to not assume everything. Uh, we were talking about the HOT team. And if anybody is not familiar with that an acronym, it's our homeless outreach team that is run by our Carlsbad Police Department. How's everybody doing? Is everybody ready? Okay, um, let's, let's go ahead. Phil, if you're ready. So raise it up just a little bit. So for Phil, it's uh, Of Mice and Men, The One Minute Manager, and then a little bit higher, please. Okay, two. All right, fantastic. Teresa. 
The Tale of Two Cities, Jane Irie, and The Language of Flowers. Thank you, Teresa. Question number two. Name two people of influence in your life that have left a very lasting impact. Phil, Bill Daniels, and his mother. Thank you, Phil. Teresa, her 97-year-old grandmother, and our, the notorious RBG, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Next question, before COVID struck, where was the last vacation you took outside the city of Carlsbad? Phil, looks like Cabo San Lucas. Thank you, Phil. And Teresa, Portugal in November of 19. Thank you, thank you. So we're now moving on to the next section. We're making phenomenal time. We're gonna spend a few minutes gathering questions from the audience. Brett will be supplying those questions to me and then I'll be asking the respondents who will have 60 seconds for a response. Matt, I have a few questions that have come in. Um, and if you like, it might be easier. Um, if you'd like, I can just ask the questions directly and then you can manage the, the response. The first one would be a yes, no question, if that's okay. Um, and candidates, if you can grab your yes, no signs for this first one. And this is a, as Matt said, these are questions from the audience. Measure G is a Carlsbad measure that uh, the voters will be voting on this election. And specifically, Car Measure G is um, for city council members compensation. And so if Measure G passes, it would directly tie city council compensation to the consumer price index um, for San Diego County. And so the question is, um, do you support Measure G, yes or no? Teresa, yes. Phil, yes. Thank you. And then um, if you would like, I have, a, I have a couple more. And these ones would not be yes, no. So these would be, as you pointed out, 60-second uh, answers. Once again, these are questions that have been submitted from the audience. Um, and the first question is, could you please share your major financial supporters? Phil. I am proud that my candidacy has been embraced by Carlsbad residents. 79% of, of, of the money that I've raised has come directly from Carlsbad. And 99% from San Diego County. So most of that's Carlsbad, some of it's um, Encinitas, uh, Rancho Santa Fe, uh, Oceanside, San Marcos areas right here. Mostly it's business people who have business interests here in Carlsbad. There's a lot of different ones. Those are, those are business people. Those are small people, $10 checks, $20 checks. I'm very proud of that. My money is right here in Carlsbad. Thank you, Phil. Teresa. Thank you. One of the hardest parts of running for office, of stepping up to run for office for me, has been asking people to support the cause because it's always hard for me to, to ask for donations, uh, even when I'm, I know and believe in the cause, uh, whether it's for a nonprofit or for the campaign. So uh, much as Leela mentioned, there is a concept of love money. And it's the idea that people who've known you for many years, I learned this through Emily's List, which is a women's training organization for political candidates, that people you've known, people who trust you and believe in you will step up when you ask them and you tell them what you're trying to accomplish for your community. That has been the vast majority more than 90% of my contributions have been love money. People who know me have known me for the past 20 years through my government involvement, through my community involvement, and have stepped up because they believe in me. And uh, there has been also that my endorsers have also come through with some amount that they can uh, provide. And endorsements are essentially organizations that share the same core values with me. They meet with me and they agree to endorse and sometimes they contribute as well, sometimes. Thank you so much, Teresa. So the next question um, will be a response question. 
and it regards, it's in regards to um, South Carlsbad Ponto Beach area. And it's had quite a history of uh, proposed projects over the years. Um, so there's a two part, the first part of the question, if each candidate could please give a yes or a no to this first part and then share after you give your yes or no. But he, the first part of the question is based off of um, Batiquitos Lagoon Foundation had submitted something to city council back in April of 2019, uh, a letter proposing um, uh, a collaboration on the site and they did not get a response for their letter. So their first, the first part of the question, if you were elected to city council, would you um, respond, would you support responding to letters that are received from organizations in Carlsbad or citizens regarding things like this? So that's the first part, just give us the yes, no. But then the second part of the question is, please share your views on the future of South Carlsbad Ponto Beach area. Great, I'll start with a yes. Uh, I, I always believe that it's important to engage our community organizations and our community residents. I place a high value on public engagement and I have a 24 hour uh, email response um, goal. I'm pretty good at it, um, but I get, I get back to people, even when I disagree with them on their opinions, I believe that public input is so important. And I think the Batiquitos Lagoon Foundation is a, an important asset to our community. So I think it's important to get back to them on their proposal. And when it comes to Ponto Coastal Park, I am in support of the Ponto Coastal Park. I have said so. I have uh, published a statement on my social media, and I've been in close communication with the residents of Ponto for over a year, talking about that site, learning about the history and the past mistakes that the city has made with regard to zoning, collecting fees from the local residents and spending it on a park elsewhere in the northern part of the city when there's a park deficit in the south part of the city in my district, District 4. So I'm working closely with the residents. The goal is to achieve a Ponto Coastal Park. I support that. We will find a way to make that happen. Thank you. Phil, your response, please. You're on mute. Certainly the city and every organization should respond to inquiries like that. I've lived in Carlsbad for 40 years. I've lived in that coastal area when I first moved here for many years. I drove the coast highway for years, every single day. And I've watched Carlsbad grow. I would love to see a park there and I would absolutely support a park there. But it's not that simple. I have ridden my bike there. I've walked that area. I've talked to residents there. I have talked to the leaders of the movement who want that park there, and they make a lot of sense, but it's a complex problem. And what I support is a comprehensive feasibility study to address all those issues, because we can't make intelligent decisions without the facts. And I think Carlsbad residents deserve council members who are going to get the facts and then make informed, intelligent decisions. So I wanna push for that feasibility study so I can make a good informed decision when I'm on the council. Yes, this is a response question. With the city council, you know, being a, a part-time position, you know, and the compensation is basically a part-time compensation, compensation, how many hours a week are you available to do the job of being a city council person in the city of Carlsbad? Phil, you're on mute, please. I have to be honest with you. I, I'm looking forward to that. If elected to the Senate city council, I would welcome a reduction in the time that I'm spending right now. Campaigning is a 24-7 job, but I'm very fortunate right now. I have a very, very flexible schedule, and I have been able to, I have a history of being able to balance a lot of balls in the air at the same time while being president of multiple organizations and on those boards of directors and getting things done. And that's what I will do for City of Carlsbad. I will spend as much time as needed to meet with people, study issues, and make intelligent decisions for the people of Carlsbad. Thank you, Phil. Teresa, so, thank you. I am committed to public service 
and I have worked in community service my entire life. I was the president of the community service club in my high school. Community service is something that I've always valued and I feel is part of my life and part of my family's life too. I mentioned I was on the board of the National Charity League. It's a mother-daughter organization that uh, encourages mothers and daughters to go out together and volunteer in the community. And that's how we became involved serving meals through the Carlsbad Senior Center and picking up uh, trash at our local beaches through Surf Rider Foundation. So it's part of my life already. And I don't think that it would be much of a reduction uh, from what I'm spending now on the campaign. It is a significant investment, but that's what I signed up for. I knew what I was getting into, eyes wide open, and I'm proud to be here stepping up to run for city council. Thank you, Teresa. Brett. Yes, so um, many of you have mentioned uh, different volunteer work you do. Question from the community. Um, please share with us the local volunteer organizations that you uh, participate in and how long you have been involved with them. Phil, your turn. I don't think 90 seconds would be enough for me to finish all of these, to be honest with you, but I'll give you a few of the highlights. And I'll start with in 2015, I was honored to be named Carlsbad Citizen of the Year. I've served in Rotary for 35 years. I was Rookie of the Year 35 years ago, and I've been Rotarian of the Year twice, 30 years apart. So I've been very active in all the work that Rotary does locally, regionally, and globally. I've been president of the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce, the Boys and Girls Club, the La Costa Youth Organization, where I also coach 25 or so teams in baseball, soccer, uh, and softball. Carlsbad Christmas Bureau, the Knights of Columbus. I have been involved in so many different things. I've gone through the city's community emergency response team. So I, I've done a lot of this city. I've tried to live by the rotary motto of service above self. And I'm proud that I've been recognized for that. Thank you, Phil. Teresa, it's your turn. Great, thank you. I was worried about uh, using bandwidth to look up things on LinkedIn, but feel free to check out my LinkedIn. I do have my volunteer experience on there and also on my website, TeresaAcosta.org. But just off the top of my head, I mentioned when I introduced myself that I chair two committees right here at the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce. Uh, there's an organization in San Diego County called MAC Project that runs seven affordable housing communities and all the Head Start programs in North County. They help families become self-sustainable. I sat on the board for six years and chaired the audit committee. I stepped down when I announced that I was running for office because we didn't want to jeopardize their 501c3 status. I uh, was on the Latino advisory board for the San Diego uh, Union Tribune for three years. And then when that was disbanded, I helped form the community advisory board for the San Diego Union Tribune. Uh, so I was on that. Again, had to step down when I decided to run for office because of a confl potential conflict. I was the vice president of the National Charity League. I was a member of that organization for seven years with my daughter. And I see the stop sign. I knew that was going to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. The question is, and again, this is from our audience, how would you handle criticism to policy decisions that you make, especially criticism on social media? Bill. When I was considering running for city council, I was having lunch with Ted Owen, the uh, predecessor to Brett as the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce. And Ted asked me that exact question. He said, Phil, how are you gonna handle criticism? I said, Ted, on the weekends, I am a soccer referee and a baseball umpire. And believe me, I know what it's like to get criticized. And sometimes, I always tell people, just because you've gotten criticized doesn't mean they were wrong. So we have to listen to people. We have to be open. As a referee, when I make a mistake, I have to, I, I kind of obsess about it until I figure out why I made a mistake so I won't do that the next time. And so uh, I have experience as a facilitator. I'm looking to listen to people and always look for the solution. And uh, you can't make everybody happy. So we'll just go with that. Thank you so much. When I decided to run for city council, this was definitely one of the detracting points on my list of pros and cons was uh, 
was the attacks that are personal, not having disagreements about the issues, but how people have, feel like they can attack you as a person. They forget that you're a mother, a sister, a daughter, that you have a family, that you're a neighbor down the street. So I have, uh, I swallowed that fear and I decided I'll run anyway because this is important enough. There's a trade-off. This is important enough to give back to my community and to do this public service, to step up, to run, to be a leader. So I put that aside and I decided to run anyway. I'm still thinking of ways to deal with sometimes uh, aggressive emails or, um, or social media posts, not emails. Actually, the emails that I have seen come through do disagree with me occasionally, but they're easy to respond to. I always talk about having a civil discourse and respecting their opinion and finding a way that we can, uh, we can accept input and incorporate that into our decision making even when that is not the same point of view. Thank you, Teresa. So we're going to make this our last question. And after this question, we're going to move on to our candidates closing comments. Brett. Given the profound and ongoing impacts of COVID on public health and the local economy, is there, is there anything you would like to do as a council member to help city residents deal with this crisis? Thank you for the question. We are living in an unprecedented time. This pandemic is global. We are living with it every day. It's affecting our economy very significantly. I'm a small business owner. I'm active with the chamber. I talk to small business owners every day. And I talk to parents like me whose kids are distance learning. And I know what a dramatic effect this is COVID-19 is having on our daily lives in all facets of our lives. As a council member, I do really appreciate uh, I, I will do what the council members have done in terms of debate the issues, consider ways that we can serve our residents. And I really appreciate the small business loan program, the gift card program that they've done in conjunction with the, the CVA and the Carlsbad Chamber. I think that we need to do more programs like that. We need to find ways to bolster our, our local economy. We also need to increase signage. I saw signage in the village, and I know that the city has supported signage in conjunction with those other organizations at some businesses, but I haven't seen enough in District 4, and I'd like to see more of that for all of us and for our safety. And Phil. Back in March when COVID first hit, I think most of us thought we can do this. I can shut down for a week or two weeks and that'll be okay. And now six months later, we are still in the middle of this. We have to learn how to manage this because it's not going away soon. And it is a very serious illness. I think the best thing that we can do is be safe. Be safe in opening our businesses. There are so many hypocrisies in some of the rules that we have. So I could be safe shopping at Costco, but a little mom and pop shop down on State Street, I, 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 I'm not safe there. We need to make sure they're consistent. We need to open up our businesses safely so they can take care of themselves. And the city, I think, has done a great job. I love eating outside anyway, and it's nice, frankly, to for some of these restaurants, they're working so hard, and we need to shop locally. Here in District 4, most of the restaurants and the food that's closest to my house, it's in Encinitas. We need to push to eat in Carlsbad, and I make a personal effort to make sure I'm doing that. Thank you, Phil. So, we are now officially moving on to our closing comments from our candidates. And these comments are scheduled to last 90 seconds. So again, first, Teresa. Thank you for the opportunity to have the discussion about the election here tonight with the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce and our friends. I am proud that I was able to share a bit about my extensive experience and my deep commitment to you all. Uh, I am very proud to be one of four generations here in La Costa. I am excited about working on these issues of our quality of life. I know that I can bring my skill set in negotiations, in collaboration, in management and leadership. I know I'll put my MBA to good use here uh, looking at our budget as we consider the fallout from the pandemic. 
So I'm looking forward to applying all that I've shared with you tonight. I'm happy to speak with you further. I know there were more questions in the chat box, uh, but I think maybe some people uh, might wanna get deeper into some of the issues and I, I'm open to that. So please send me a note through the website, teresaacosta.org. I look forward to connecting with you. I'm grateful for the opportunity and I'm proud to be running for Carlsbad City Council District 4. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Phil, it is your turn. I moved here to Carlsbad 40 years ago, and I found heaven. As a young man, I lived a block away from the beach, and I have been here ever since. I have been involved in the community, and I know people all over town because I've worked with them on so many of their organizations. I am proud that my money is right here in Carlsbad. I have some love money, but it's not much. I have love money from the people here in Carlsbad who know me and have worked with me over the decades that I have served this city. I am proud that the mayor and six former city council members have endorsed my candidacy. They know what it takes to be an effective council member and they know I will be one. They've worked with me. They worked with me when I took over the Carlsbad Christmas Bureau and it had $20 in its checking account and I turned that around. I spent 20 years as president of that and we served 500 less fortunate families every year, and we were solvent. They've attended the Carlsbad Rotary Oktoberfest. I was the leader of that for six years, and it's a great community event putting money right back into the city of Carlsbad. I have a proven record of service to my hometown city, Carlsbad. I bring leadership skills, I bring problem solving, and I bring vision, and that's what I will bring to the city council as I continue to serve my fellow residents here in Carlsbad. Thank you. So that concludes our program for tonight. I wanna to thank Brett and the staff at the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce for their work to organize this forum to give our candidates a chance to share their views. Catherine, I wanna thank you for the amazing job you did keeping us on track, that was very, very, very well done. I want to thank our candidates. Carlsbad is an exceptional place to live. It's an exceptional place for work-life balance, and we need exceptional leaders. So I want to thank you all for your desire to serve our community. So thank you.